Have you ever struggled spreading butter on bread and it feels like you're breaking the bread more than you're actually spreading the butter? This video is for you then because today I'm going to tell you how you can keep your butter soft, fresh, uh, spreadable, and I'm going to also show you my favorite butter bell. My name is Anya here at Our Gabled Home. I love sharing our urban homesteading journey, lots of recipes and little tips and tricks for your kitchen, such as this one. If you're new on my channel, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoy this content, I always love it if you give me a like. And also, if you have any questions or comments, please drop me a line in the comments below this video because I always love to engage with everybody watching my videos. So why would you use a butter bell or butter crock? The two are interchangeable because it keeps your butter fresh, it keeps your butter spreadable, and the butter crocks or butter bells are very easy to use. First, I'm gonna show you my favorite butter crock or butter bell and then i'm gonna talk about some tips and tricks how to use them and how to make the most out of your butter bell or your butter crock here i have four kind of different butter crocks or butter bells this is the sweeties this is a this is a marble one, this is another porcelain one, and this looks a little bit like a mason jar. I'm assuming that it's supposed to look like that. Ultimately, they all work by the same concept you have, and I'm just gonna use this one right here. You have two pieces to this. You have one that you dunk upside down into a container, and it has this part up here, you spread the butter in here, and then you put it upside down in this container. You have some water down here, and then you just place it on here. When you're ready to use the butter from the butter crock, you can even put it on the table just like so. So basically they all work the same. And I'm gonna start with the marble one. I'm gonna place these over here. So this is actually the most expensive butter crock. I'm going to be leaving all the links in the description box below this video. So if one of them stands out to you and you'd like to have it, you know exactly where to find it. So this is marble. I think marble is really beautiful. It um, is a little bit, this one is the hardest to get out. I feel like if this was any wider, I would not be able to slide it into this receptacle. Um, it also is easy to grab here. My hands are about medium size, so I feel like that is the easy part. It is very heavy, and therefore I might be worried that it's easy to drop it and then of course it breaks, and when it's pretty expensive, it's harder to replace it. However, it costs a little bit more than $21 on Amazon, so I mean, it's not the end of the world. Um, because of the texture of marble, I feel like the butter actually stays really nicely in here. And so that is the marble one. I'm not sure that I like this one the best if you love marble and you like this kind of statement in your kitchen, I think it's a perfect one to get because all the functions are there. However, because it is so heavy and because it is a little bit more expensive and because as you can um, see, I have to pull a little bit harder and this might just be this particular one that I have right here, this might not be my favorite one. Next, I'm gonna show you this one. It says, Butter, have a nice day. Down, down, don't, don't, down, down, down. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And this one runs almost $17 on Amazon. I like it because 
it is a very clean design it has a bit of that mason jar look so if we all love mason jars and you want that kind of look with the lid here that would be perfect in your kitchen my personal feel is that this might be the biggest um, receptacle here for the butter up here and what i also like is that in here it has a black line that shows you to where to fill the water having said that my hands are about medium size i feel like this takes me a little bit more in terms of grabbing it than this one for example because it's a little smaller and so for smaller hands than mine um, it might not be the best grip that's just what i'm trying to say it's also the widest and uh, the the biggest of them all next we have the original butter crock so it is called it costs 26 dollars. so when i said that this was the most expensive one i have to correct myself this is actually more expensive than the marble one it is nice because you can grab it up here just like this other one and pull it out it has a good size receptacle for the butter up here however there is no line to indicate to where you want to fill the water so um, that because it is so expensive and i don't feel like there's any features on this that the other ones wouldn't have actually it doesn't have the line this might also not be my favorite one and lastly we have this sweecy's butter crock does it say sweecy's anywhere no it says it on the bottom <laughs> so that's how you know it it has a bit of a cleaner design it is um when these are a perfect white this is almost like a little bit of an off-white but it works beautiful in our kitchen you wouldn't notice any difference you can easily grab it up here as you see there's no butter in it and i'm going to talk about that in a moment and it has a little line down there that shows you to where to fill the butter this one runs about 14 dollars on amazon so having said all this i think this might be my favorite one just because i feel like it's a really good price it has all the functionalities and it works really well so that would be my number one choice however you can't go wrong with any of these and depending on what your kitchen looks like and what your purpose is you might prefer another one now i'm going to talk about how to use these and how to get the most out of them the concept again is the same for every single one i'm going to move these over here And I'm gonna show you I will actually as you can see in this one the butter has dropped in here which I'm gonna talk about in a moment so what I'm gonna do is take the butter out and place it on a paper towel so what you do is very simple you take this bottom part and fill it up to the fill line the ones that have a fill line with water then you take your butter and place it in the top portion now as you can see and i told you that just because of the material i felt that the marble butter crock actually kept the butter in there the best um, the butter has fallen out of every single one of them so that is something that i experienced but i want to show you what i do so the first thing you want to make sure is that the inside is completely dry and clean so i'm going to clean that for this video with a paper towel otherwise i would just use my regular kitchen towel and make sure it is completely dry because if there's any water the butter will not stick to it so we're making it completely dry and clean then you take your butter you want your butter to be somewhat soft and you can actually take it with the back of the spoon here just like so and press it in here and 
and this one doesn't want to stay. So however you get the idea here, and this is homemade butter, and I'm going to also talk about uh, how and why homemade butter might behave a little bit differently than if you buy butter in the store. By the way, if you would like to learn how to make butter, I have a video up here where you can learn how to make your own butter. It's super simple. I have some cream back there and I'm going to make some butter later. It's three minutes tops in my household. So you take your butter and simply press it in here. And once you have done that, you turn it upside down and you place it on your counter. And then when you need your butter, you want to spread it on some piece of toast, some piece of bread or on some crackers or however you're going to use your butter. You simply take it out with a knife. As you can see, it is very soft here, perfect for spreading. And when you're done, you simply place this back in here and leave it on your counter. We have found that even though we have a top compartment in our refrigerator with a cover that is the butter compartment, but I found that even in that the butter is too hard and it's just not really spreadable, which is why I like using a butter bell. Now, this is the, the really easy concept of how you do it. In terms of keeping it on your counter, you want to make sure that your room temperature doesn't exceed 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 Celsius. Uh, when it gets hotter than that, your butter might actually melt into the water, which is no big deal because then you just fish it out and press it back in. Also, it might get a little bit too soft. You want to exchange your water every two to three days, and that will keep your butter fresh for about a month. Now I want to talk about homemade butter versus store-bought butter. We love making our own butter, so that's what we're using here. When we don't have homemade butter, I love to always get, if you're a regular here, you might have heard me say it, the highest quality ingredients you or products that you can afford. So we love the Kerrygold butter because it is very creamy and um, has a high fat content and a lower water content. Now this is actually, even though I will show you in my videos how to make butter, you squeeze all the remaining whey and water out of your butter. However, I have found that no matter how much I use my butter paddles and squeeze out and squeeze out and squeeze out, I cannot get my homemade butter as dry as the store-bought butter. For that reason, this is what I do. I'm gonna fish this out again and place this on here. It is a very warm day today, so my kitchen is a little warm. So what I do with the homemade butter is I place it on a paper towel and I squeeze it just like so. It works a little bit better the colder the butter is because otherwise the butter will melt into the paper towel. And now you can see that I have formed this little ball here. I'm going to do that a little bit more. In the meantime, I'm going to wipe this one more time because I feel like I pressed some water in here. And if there's water in here, your butter will not stick. It's not the end of the world if the, water fall, if the butter falls into the water. You just fish it out and press it in there. However, it kind of defeats the purpose because you just want to take the top part out and be good to go. So one of the reasons to use this butter bell is because it's easy and when it falls in there, it's not easy. Okay. So now that it is dry, I will use my spoon and press it back in here. And you can see it sticks, it holds. It usually works a little bit better if you spread it around a little bit. There you go. Place it into the container with the water. And when you're ready to use it, you take it out. There shouldn't be any water on the butter and you just exchange the water every two to three days. 
Now, how does this work? Why does this keep your butter fresh? Because you have water in there, you're creating an airtight seal because the top portion will go into the water so there's um, no air exchange and air is what makes your butter go bad and that is the very simple easy way to keep butter on your counter and have it spreadable so that's really all there is if you are using very spreadable butter in your kitchen such as lando lakes you will see on the ingredient list that oftentimes it has vegetable oils, margarine in there. Those types of butter will not work with the butter crocs. You have to use real 100% butter. It doesn't matter if you're using European style butter or regular American butter or homemade butter. This is how you keep your butter spreadable on the counter. Very simple to use. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have another video on how to make homemade butter. And then I have an entire playlist of dairy products you can make in your own kitchen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.